I think we're going to use this term a lot in today's episode, remarkable, because it's been a remarkable run with Distillery. I don't quite know how to explain it, something I pride my channel on, I can't explain my results, I can't explain how we're playing, but I can say one thing, you all know the song 1-0 to the Arsenal, well we're going to go and steal it, it's 1-0 to the Distillery. <laughs> Yes, hello and welcome along to part 21 of Lifting Spirits with me, Daniel. And as I mentioned in the intro, I just don't know how to explain things anymore. Whether it's the awful runs we were having in the head coach at Airbus, whether it was the frustrating run of draws here, whether it was the five wins to save ourselves, whether it's the six wins in a row here, I don't actually have an explanation. We've changed nothing. And we've suddenly gone on a run of 1-0 wins, keeping clean sheets galore, flying up the table. And at least we know it. Well, I say we're going to be safe now. We're halfway through the year. We're only 11 points clear of odds. And if we have a run like we've had in reverse, then it could very easy turn around quickly. But we'll have a look at the results. We'll have a look at the transfer work. The window is open again. And we'll play Bellina Millard and H&W Welders. That game is because of a postponement. It was due to be lawful I was showing. I don't want to sound like an idiot at this point, but there are some problems we've got to address too. But let's go and get straight to the form because we need to talk about this and I don't really understand it. I actually played the odds game as an extra just to try and lose one because... It's been a really bizarre spell. So you were last with me as we drew with Dundala, which made it five league games without a win. We then lost against Ballyclare on the Tuesday night by two goals to one. Youngster Buchanan scored our goal. But after that point, we were getting the media messages, fans criticising tactics, what on earth's going on. The supporters rating went down to a C minus, the board rating down to a C. And it was starting to look that we were a couple of results from being in trouble. Then, I don't know what happened, and I don't know how to explain it genuinely. I changed nothing tactically. The only thing I did was rotate the squad a bit more, bring in the likes of Sienna Foster a few times, but in terms of the nuts and bolts of how we play, I changed nothing. And what's ironic in this is our strikers aren't scoring at all. They're having goal droughts. We're having really poor spells in front of goal. But just a run of clean sheets after, what is it, nine games without one, we then kept three in a row, four in a row in the league. So let's go and have a look at the runner wins. We won 3-1 at Annie United. 1-0 down at half time. I was saying, here we go again. A sacking might not be far away. At that stage, after that first half, we were bottom of the league table. As it happens, we turned it around and Welders didn't hang on to their result. And it all looked very different. But Latifa, McKee and Marty Bell making the comeback there. A 1-0 win against Banga, 93rd minute winner against 10 men. Marty Bell off the bench again as the Jordan Jenkins goal drought continued. 1-0 against Balamina, yes that man again, who actually became first choice at the expense of our star striker. Against Welders, you guessed it, 1-0 Marty Bell just after the break. Against Armar in the cup, we then got shocked against third tier opposition. Ethan Warnock set up the winner from a left hand side cross and we got the usual stuff about disappointing in the cups. Then we went back to 1-0 wins in the league, Mark McKee scoring that one, and a 2-1 win against Dards, McKee and Orkin getting the goals there. After we fell behind again, it should be noted. But the big story has been, I cannot get Jordan Jenkins to score a goal, or get a rating above a 6.2. Marty Bell off the bench seems to be popping up with goals, the youngster, to the extent where he started at times. But I think it all harps back to giving him a new contract, because Jenkins since then has really not played well at all, albeit he's been training much better. So that is the other side of this, which has been going quite well. We've managed to get a fair few tied down to new contracts for an extended another year. So we've got McGill, we've got Orchin, we've got Edgar, I think was on a two-year deal anyway. Levinston signed a new one, Jenkins the same. And then we've got these youth players who really bizarrely won't sign professional terms on a sort of part-time deal they all want to be pay as you play now I know that's probably because they want to plot and escape to top tier clubs but we talked about it in the comments a few times about how do we get this side to start making money while it's in the second tier because despite the run we're on Balamina are miles clear we won't be in the top two and we will drop off before too long because we're not playing well but what I've got to wonder is without getting those guys down to deals and getting sell-on clauses when they move on 
How are we going to make money? That's the big question. If we go and have a look at the transfers at the moment, the window is open. We've got some transfer budget. We've got some wage budget. It's a good job we're not spending it because at the moment we're going absolutely nowhere. Financially, we're losing money despite that not being spent. So I want to try and be cautious with this being a long-term save. Add to that that some of the youth players are now getting interest. Cathal McGlynn, who's the keeper of the youth team, got an offer from Watford. It was for nothing with no sell-on clause. So I didn't actually ask them for a fee. I just wanted a 20% sell-on. They weren't willing to give it. So he stays here for now. But in terms of the history, there is one player leaving the club. Ryan McGiven wanted to force his way out. So that contract didn't do us much help. But Bally McCash Rangers, a side we played in a third tier last year, they picked him up for nothing. So back down for him. Do you know what? He was really important for us last year. Popped up with a crucial stoppage time goal one time. And to be fair, he was rock solid at left back and we needed it. So Ryan McGiven, thank you for your service. Now go and enjoy the rest of your career. For us though, it's a weird old time. We've got two big games coming up. A run of four home games in five this month. And it is starting to look like we're a very decent side. If we do pick up a couple of wins, particularly looking at welders today who are bottom of the league, then perhaps we don't have to worry about relegation or the bottom half even of the split. But I've got to caution you with something, which is I've closed FM because we went on a run of six wins. I couldn't record in the evening. We came onto our live stream at Woken on Wednesday night and I shut FM down. And we all know what that means. If you go on a winning streak, you're going to get battered. So let's go and get into it. See how many we lose by. At least the run of clean sheets has ended already. So that won't break our heart. But at the moment, looking at the table, I mean, I say we're in great shape. Bellina Malad, if they beat us, they go above us and we could be in sixth place. So while things are looking cushy, while it's certainly a lot better than where we were last time, it's a remarkable run of form. It is still just five or six games away from a crisis. I mean, we were almost at the point of talking about our job when we started winning games. 161 fans in. Let's go and see what team we can put out. This is the side we played against Ards. Of course, we've had a little bit more rest this time around. So let's go and pick our 11. It won't be too different and we'll run through it in a minute. So because Marty Bell has had a couple of poor games now, I'm actually going to bring Jenkins back in and give him another chance. But Marty Bell has been the superstar here. He's not really got the stats. He shouldn't be as good, but he's delivering. Looking at the rest of the team, the only real position to think about is Edgar at left back. Has suddenly started performing a lot better. But has had a couple of poor games now and Reed I would like to bring in. The problem though, following us putting him to left back in the last episode, is that his parent club Lahn then complained we were playing him out of position. So we've got to basically save him as a backup. He's going to play 10 less games now from being a centre half, but Lahn won't be unhappy because he hasn't played out of position. It doesn't make sense, does it? But that is the 11 in four, no change to a win inside. Connor Mitchell in goal, McGill and Edgar the fullbacks with Orchin and Farquhar as centre half. Becht and Levinston the centre midfielders, Latifa and Johnston the wingers, and then Mark McKee back in form at the right time behind Jordan Jenkins, the goal drought man, on his own up front. We've got Marty Bell on the bench, we've got Buchanan who popped up with a recent goal. Lots more experience now with Chambers and Foster there as well. So into the game we go. The first of two today. And on paper, this one's the trickier one. Two changes for our visitors today as we look to continue a remarkable league run. Let's just go straight into the first half. I know what's coming because I've closed FM, but an empty crowd, hopefully that will improve in future seasons. Because if they're not coming in in this form, they ain't ever coming in. Into the first half we go. Belina Millard, best youth set up in the country. How many of these are good? Well, it's been a quiet half an hour or so, but we're back with a corner kick. And this has sort of been our story of recent weeks. Down to Farquhar from Levinston at the back stick. And there we go. A nothing game. 33 minutes of no highlights, no quality and no real cutting edge. And with our second shot on target, a drop down from a corner. We score off the second ball. Farquhar puts it in. I don't want to tempt fate because it's only half time. But has anyone seen a turnaround like this? To go from scrapping relegation, drawing nearly every game, I guess it was fine margins before. We weren't getting battered. We weren't losing many. But we weren't really showing much cutting edge. It was one alls. It was two alls. It was draws. To have a rock solid defence pick up one nil after one nil. I just, I've never seen anything like it. And I can't explain it because I have not changed a thing other than perhaps bringing in Becht for Chambers in the holding role as the Tifa gets behind. 
We might have got even better from turning the game off. We're 2-0 up. We never win by two goals. This is ridiculous. Levinston gets another assist. It was a knockdown for the first. This one, a quality switch of play. And with an hour gone, this might be our most comfortable win in ages. It's been a brilliant performance. I'm starting to get a bit worried now as McKee picks the ball up on the left in towards the tee for at the back post off the line by Greer. That was an opportunity as McKee again delivers. Over hit. Farquhar keeps it in on the right. What's he doing over there? Back to Levinston. Sets two up. Goes for goal himself. Blocked behind. I'm not sure who off because it's a goal kick. But look at the stats. It's dominance. We're starting to look a really good side. Despite that though, Jordan Jenkins is still struggling. So Marty Bell is on. On the left hand side, we're going to go for. In fact, I'll bring on Buchanan. He'll go to the right. Latifa, inverted winger off the left. Uh, in defence, we'll bring on Foster for McGill. He's had a decent game. Becht for Chambers. We were just mentioning that sub. And then maybe Kiel Emreed, maybe Miller. We'll leave it five more minutes. I know they're not getting a full development if the kids only come on for 10, but they're getting appearances. And that makes it look like I'm developing youth. So McKee will come off with nine to go. On comes Andrew Miller. And it is a crime, really. You should get development from 10 minutes of first team football. But this has been brilliant. I'm going to have to change the song for the next episode. It's not 1-0 to the distillery. It's 2-0 to the distillery. Full time, clean sheet again. I've never seen a turnaround like it. Distillery are on a roll. Back in a moment to face the bottom side at home. But hopefully the run continues. Well, back for the Welders game. And this is an interesting one because they're bottom of the league. They're miles adrift. They're basically relegated already. This is exactly when a good run ends on FM, isn't it? We've had it before in other saves. I'm sure we'll have it here. Let's see how it pans out. If we go through to the inbox, we haven't got much going on this week apart from a loan offer for Patrick Kennedy. He was signed by Lahn from Institute. But unfortunately for them, he's decided to reject us, despite the fact they didn't want a wage contribution. If we go and have a look at Lahn, there is one thing we should be proud of. Bobby Harvey's broken in at right back. I scouted him again. No chance we're ever getting him now. Let's move on to the inbox because there are a few other scouting bits that are of interest to us. There's some really good free agents that were released in the winter, but at the moment, none of them are really within our wage structure. So there was a right winger. Uh, there's Jamie Robinson there and Jarlif O'Rourke, the left back. But at the moment, it's not going to happen. So we'll wait a month. If they don't get picked up, we'll have another go. But for now, Robinson's been looked at by the likes of Balamina and Nuri, who are up the top of this league. And we can't compete. Not financially, anyway. Let's go and get through to the tactical meeting. It's a big game in the Irish Cup for a lot of sides. We went out to Armagh, of course, and they're away at Banbridge. That would have been a game I'd fancied. So for now, we focus on the league. We try and make up some positions and some points on the top two that we didn't expect to be challenging. I'm sure we're not going to get anywhere near Balamina. They are about 20 points clear of us. But Nuri, with three games in hand, you never know. I'm wondering though, will this be when the run ends? It always seems to be. Lots of changes being recommended. For some reason, our assistant manager loves Pierce McVarnock. He's one of the worst rated players at the club. Technically, he's awful. I know he did score on his only sub appearance that first game of the season we saw. But still, it does seem a little bit odd to me. But maybe he's just picking on form. I say form from four months ago. Let's go and get through to the team selection. You know what I'm going to do, don't you? Same 11, same 18. There's no reason to change it. Jordan Jenkins not been great. We're going to keep persisting with him. Marty Bell, he's not in form now either. So it doesn't matter which one we pick. Through to the game we go. Can we make the run? Eight consecutive league wins. Can we make it? Six clean sheets in seven, which would almost be the most remarkable thing. Only one way to find out. Through to the game we go. Well, time for us to face the Harland and Wolf Welders, one of my favourite names in Northern Irish football. But if we have a look at the team they've got out, no real stars in there. You can perhaps see why they're struggling near the bottom and no names that we've popped up against in this save to any aplomb anyway. Let's go and get through. They've made one change. We've made none. It's a stable team. Maybe that contributes as well now. With everyone fit, with everyone firing. Let's just ask them to pick up where they left off. Three motivated, but we need a goal for Jenkins. That's the only thing that can make this better. Let's go and get into the first half. A few more fans in today, weirdly. And Jordan Jenkins, look at him. He can't even smile now. He's not scored a goal for ages. It is the only thing we're not doing. If we can get a striker scoring, tell you what, we could start winning fours and fives. 
Well, back with 10 minutes on the clock as Connor Mitchell picks the ball up in his own area, rolls out to Mark Edgar, who again, transformation in form, I've no idea why, didn't talk to him, didn't change his duty, nothing, as Beck picks it up to McKee. Running wide of him is Johnston, Jenkins in behind, has to be the moment, he's in one-on-one, -on -one. it's a good save McGovern. Oh, I got overexcited there, I thought that was it. It's now a corner kick. This is how our first goal came last week. Johnston to the back post it will be. Orkins up, wins the header. Just over the bar. I say just, it was quite comfortably over. 12 gone note with a better side. We just need a goal to keep it calm. Well, I say keep it calm. The panic may be setting in now because we're 33 gone. We're not really creating anything other than the odd set piece. But this is honestly what every game has been like. It's been so similar to this one and the last one. Not many chances, mostly set pieces, and we're popping up with goals that just are against the run of play or haven't really got any sort of build-up to them. If we get through the dressing room here, we're going to tell the lads to keep working hard. You've seen a lot of our goals have come early in the second half. Seems to be a pattern of this year's FM. We were conceding a lot in the first season at that time. But as we come up to the hour mark, we might have to do something here. Because again... It's Jordan Jenkins. So Marty Bell, the usual saviour is on. McKee will be replaced by Miller, who we keep getting told is training well too. And Edgar at left back not having a great game. So those three will come off. Reed will get a go at left back. And with half an hour to go, it's nil-nil. We're playing the bottom side in the league. And of course, this is where it starts to go wrong. Let's go positive. Let's encourage. We'll think about subs in a moment because Johnston is on a booking again. And I really do struggle with that sometimes. So Latifa onto the left. Onto the right is Buchanan. And then in a holding role, Bechtoff. Replaced, of course, by Jack Chambers. The man who was first choice for so long and has been so crucial to us. With 20 to go, can we find a winner? Some of their players look out on their feet. But we're not really creating a great deal here. I don't want to go over attacking because I don't want to ruin that run of clean sheets. But with five to go, I think we've got to do something here. I'm going to demand more. Try and get them on the front foot. And here we are with a Connor Mitchell free kick. Up to Keelan Reed, who's cutting in from left back. Is it going to be another 1-0? Surely not. Keelan Reed gets it back to Orkin. I mean, it's the sort of game for the run to end. As it's down the left to Latifa. Two in the middle. Marty Bell's one. Oh, it's not a penalty kick. I thought he was going to give it. Bell keeps it in for Buchanan. Cross to Latifa. Oh, it's in. It's 1-0 again. 88th minute. Buchanan sets it up, the youngster. This is getting ridiculous. I don't know how to explain it. It's been a nothing game again. But into four minutes of stoppage time. It's 1-0 to the distillery. And Arsenal, I'm coming for your song because you don't deserve it anymore. You ain't matching this. 1-0 Lisbon Distillery. And that now is five of the last seven wins. All been by a goal to nil. The clean sheet's remarkable. No shots on target against. And Buchanan a youngster stepping up. I mean... There's a different match winner every time. It's just never Jordan Jenkins. So with me left utterly perplexed again, is it just the morale and confidence? Look at the lads there, assured, confident. They feel like they're always going to nick a goal. And I tell you what, if we can get Jenkins scoring, this is going to be a field day. What a performance from the lads. They're offering nothing to deserve to win a lot of these games. But it's another 1-0. It's even an inverted winger playing out of position there. I mean, it's just remarkable. Have you ever seen anything like it? And can someone explain it for me? Because this is something I always pride my channel on, is trying to explain how we're getting the results we are. And I normally feel like I can do that. Here, no idea. Genuinely, no idea. And a good thing with distillery in this league is you get £101 for a win and 33 for a draw. And looking at the finances, they're not going down that quickly. There's actually a profit this month. So really good signs on that front. Let's go and have a look at the schedule though, because I don't really know what to say. I don't know what games to come back for. I just don't feel like we're going to lose at the moment. It's eight league wins in a row, six clean sheets. I mean, you've watched with your own eyes what I've been witnessing and I can't explain. So... Hopefully one of you can do it better. And if you can, feel free to take the microphone because I ain't got a clue. <laughs> Let's work out when we're going to be back. So Nuri and Balamina are the top two, but we're probably going to get blown away by them. They are the sides that are miles clear. I mean, unless things get really interesting, I might come back for the last games before the split. Just get to the end of the season. Now it looks like it's going to be a, an upper mid table one and just comfortable. But really bizarre year. Great to have loads of players tied down. And as you can tell from me saying the same thing over and over, 
I really don't know what to say. So if you did enjoy this episode, the 1-0 to the distillery continues, the clean sheets continue. Please do put a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for daily FM23 content from two long-term stories. Not looking quite as good in a head coach. You can find that playlist up in the eye above. But thank you as always for coming along. Hopefully we can keep up the run of 1-0s because it's one of the most remarkable spells I've ever had in Football Manager. Certainly in the lower leagues with an average team. You want to see if we can back it up and come back here in a couple of days time. Mm -hmm.